welcome to our culture show on I-24 News, where we bring you the latest stories in the world of entertainment and art. Today on the program, Jeff Wall is showing his work in the Tel Aviv Museum of Art. A special event promotes peace in a truly unique way. And are robots the future of the art world? All of this is coming right up, but first, some of today's cultural headlines. Best-selling author Tom Clancy died on Wednesday at age 66. Best known for his espionage and political thrillers featuring the character of CIA analyst Jack Ryan, many of Clancy's novels have made it to the big screen. The Hunt for Red October, Patriot Games, and Clear and Present Danger all proved to be major box office hits. Clancy was one of the most popular and prolific authors of the last 20 years, writing 17 number one New York Times bestsellers. The Penguin Group released a statement saying Clancy was one of the most visionary storytellers of our time. His last novel, Command Authority, will be published on December 3rd. British graffiti artist Banksy is taking over the streets of New York. The artist revealed plans to create works in what he described as a month-long residency on the streets of the Big Apple that will result in a sprawling exhibition called Better Out Than In. The first works popped up earlier this week, and next to them was a phone number providing a parody of a museum audio guide. However, the well-publicized art did not receive much respect was quickly altered by New York's smart crew, a group of local graffiti artists, and later completely painted over. After months of rumors and speculation, it's now official. Marc Jacobs is leaving Louis Vuitton. The designer serves, uh, served as the brand's artistic director for the last 15 years, and his last fashion show for the brand was one of the highlights of the recent Paris Fashion Week. According to an official statement, Jacobs would like to devote his time to his own personal brand. Which means I'm going to have to replace all of my Louis Vuitton bags with Marc Jacobs ones. Shucks. The Parent Circle Family Forum is a very unusual organization that, organization that brings together bereaved families from both sides of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in order to promote peace. This week, they held a special event in Tel Aviv exhibiting the result of a photography, embroidery, and jam-making workshops by women from both sides. Avril Rosenzvi has the story. In the Tel Aviv Cinematheque, at the heart of Israel's culture capital, a very unique event took place at the end of September, hosting an exhibition of photography, food, and embroidery created by Israeli and Palestinian women who came together through a shared pain. It's like my life lost meaning after it was there. And uh, I was looking for something that would give me a cause, something to go on living for. Mm. I, I saw the, uh, sisters like me crying because they lost their beloved ones. Um, also, uh, mothers uh, crying. So um, I couldn't separate between my tears and my, the, the Jewish uh, tears. The Parent Circle Families Forum brings together families from both sides of the conflict who have lost loved ones to promote dialogue and understanding. The event marked the culmination of a three-month-long creative project. What you're looking at in the whole background here is 10 Palestinian and Israeli women um, some of the Palestinian women never held a camera in their lives. Iris Segev, who took part in the photography workshop, lost her son Nimrod in the Lebanon war when he was only 28 years old. It got me uh, connected to Nimrod, to my son, because uh, in many aspects I uh, stay away from him, because from his memory, uh, from his pictures, because it causes me so much pain. She joined the family circle to try and deal with her personal loss. Only after four years I heard about the forum, and uh, so I knew that that was the thing that I really needed, uh, because it is about peace and about um, no more killing. Aisha Aktam helped organize the courses and exhibitions. She joined the parent circle after losing her brother, 
who was shot by Israeli soldiers and died a few years later as a result of his injuries. Aisha's daughter took part in the photography project, during which the Palestinian and Israelis were paired up and photographed each other in their homes. It's the first time in which my mother sits with the Jewish people and talk with them. She said how much I, I was really, I, I'm so sad because they killed her son. She's a mother and I, I am a mother and I can understand her uh, suffering. We're brought up in, in this land uh, uh, learning that Palestinian women uh, encourage their sons to go to fight the Israelis. And um, like maybe they don't mind their sons dying. And I found out that it wasn't a bit like this. While the forum's work presents a very idyllic picture of cooperation and dialogue, the meetings often clash with the reality of the region. This event, for example, almost didn't happen because uncertainty until the very last minute if the Palestinian participants will receive entry permits. Today has been a miracle because more than 200 Palestinians came. And I can't tell you what I feel like inside, you know, because with all the lack of hope, when you look around you and you see this, it's incredible. For over 30 years, Jeff Wall has been considered one of the world's most groundbreaking photographers. Through his work and essays, Wall helped define the Vancouver School, which ushered in a new era of post-conceptual photography. Wall recently attended the opening of his new retrospective at the Tel Aviv Museum of Art. Jeff Wall is one of the most subversive photographers of his generation. Since the 1970s, he promoted a tableau, a living picture, as his calling card, which helped establish the postmodern photography. Wall's work includes a distinctive cinematic quality, yet he never wished to act as a mere reporter. His photographs and portraits often feature amateur models with no previous experience who act out their own lives. Wall attended the opening of his new retrospective at the Tel Aviv Museum of Art. Visibility includes a variety of 30 large photographs by Wall. The audience is met by enlarged images which size up to 3 meters and more, confronting visitors with the unusual element in each work. I like the fact that we um, call the show Visibility because I, I, think, I think that a picture, whether it's a photograph, a painting or something, um, if it's intriguing, part of that is because it's not absolutely certain that we know what we're seeing. That what we're seeing is clearly this or that, whether it's actual, whether it's inactual, whether it's even there or not. Wall often draws inspiration from literary classics and art masterpieces, with photographs based on such works as Ralph Ellison's The Invisible Man, Yukio Mishima's Spring Snow, and Redan's The Thinker. Wall brings many known images and characters to life, but adds an element of surrealism, questioning their vividness. For example, in the picture, The Thinker shows the man on the, sitting there with a knife in his back. In some sense, he's not there because such a person doesn't exist. You can't sit quietly thinking with a big bayonet in your back. It's not possible. So in some actual way, he's not there. And yet there you see him. Despite also capturing many real life events, Wall is far from being a documentarist. His work deliberately lacks the essential decisive moment, which is what all documentarists strive to capture. At the age of 66, Wall continues to stage people, always adding his own unique twist to reality. In just a little bit, we'll see robots making art, but first, a selection of cultural events from around the world. Museum in London mounts a large exhibition of Shunga, historic Japanese erotica. 150 works of explicit nature, made between 1600 and 1900, are on display. The exhibition sheds light on this unknown taboo art form that depicts the sexual side of Japanese culture. The exhibition Sex and Pleasure in Japanese Art is on display until January. Parental guidance is advised for visitors under 16. The Moscow Opera production of Prince Igor started October 2nd at the Tel Aviv Performing Arts Center. 
the Russian epic by Alexander Borodin tells the story of the prince's war against the invading Polovtsian tribes. The colorful production has tens of singers and dancers and an impressive chorus befitting Borodin's opus. The opera will play in Tel Aviv until October 12th. After a tumultuous launch with crashing servers due to a large number of users, Grand Theft Auto V Online is ready to receive players from around the world. The complex in-game world allows players to explore the sprawling city and the desert around it. You can play tennis, golf or darts, and of course, steal cars and perform heists with your friends. Alex Kisling is an Austrian artist who, had a, who has a lifelong fascination with robots. Now he's using them to simultaneously create the same work in three different locations around the world. Sandy Fortis brought us this story. An original artwork and its copies are being made simultaneously in Vienna, London and Berlin. Artist Alex Keisling likes to call them clones. Keisling is currently conducting both an artistic and technological achievement. This remarkable effort is done thanks to a unique process. An infrared sensor traces the movements of his pen, sending signals via satellite to the industrial robots. For sure, this is the first time such a thing is taking place. No artist has managed long-distance work with machines, with robots before. This is absolutely the first time. This symbiosis between the artist and his two robots is the result of a long process. For six months, Alex Keisling has been preparing this installation for the trio to work together. Both machines weighing 435 kilos repeated the artist's gestures before an astound audience. Very amazing and you know I I major like I study electronics engineering and you know it's the communication skills are remarkable like located in the museum quarter in Vienna. Trafalgar Square in London and Breitscheidplatz in Berlin, the three paintings seem identical. They will soon be joined to form a unique triptych for all to see in Vienna and London. This technological innovation might give us a glimpse to the next revolution of long-distance art. With me in the studio now is I-24 news correspondent Anthony Grant. Thanks for coming, Anthony. Pleasure. Uh, you're a huge Madonna fan, and you're here to tell us about a new project of hers. Right, a secret project. Okay, uh, not se so secret, well, I guess, if you're here telling us about it. Or are you um, telling us a secret? Well, actually, the secret's out of the bag. But oh. um, Madonna's secret project, uh, Revolution, as she's calling it, is a 17-minute film. Uh, which she has uh, produced with uh, Steve Klein, the very famous New York photographer. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's been building up to this for many, many months, uh, little teases of it here and there. And now it's been released. It's, you can see it online. And uh, this project, uh, which is no longer secret, is, is a sort of a politicized Madonna. She came off of the heels from her, uh, her big MDNA tour right. and uh, for various reasons was inspired to do this rather disturbing film, actually. Uh, why disturbing? What's disturbing about it? Yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm still processing, processing. this. Uh, the secret and not so secret now, and now disturbing yeah. from Madonna. She's not really into... I mean, she used to be, but I think that in recent years, at least, she hasn't been creating as much chaos as she has right. uh, exactly. before. But in, now maybe she's uh, going back to her old ways? Well, and it seems like the chaos actually came to her, and it did inspire her. You know, her, her tour, uh, her MD, MDNA tour kicked off in Tel Aviv. Right. And she um, was uh, doing this tour at a time when uh, political tensions, as always in the Middle East, but they were at a, at a, at a, a very tense uh, juncture. Right. There was a question of whether or not maybe she wouldn't actually perform in Tel Aviv because of tensions with Iran mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, between Iran and, and Israel. If we back up a little bit, uh, Madonna has said that um, uh, Israel is a huge source of energy. Right. So she wanted to, to come to Tel Aviv. And actually, we can take a look uh, at what she says about Tel Aviv. It's quite interesting. Let's take a look. What we had was in Tel Aviv. And before we even arrived, there was the threat of war of Israel bombing Iran and that was a very real threat and was the concert going to get canceled or wasn't it should we continue, should we start the tour there should we not you know it was you what know, did you end up deciding I said one? we're going we're going we're you know we're definitely going you know the threat of war is not keeping me out of a country actually 
So, uh, so there you have it from the right. horse's mouth, so to speak. Madonna is undeterred. Uh, so she comes to Tel Aviv. She's caught up in that. She's aware of the geopolitical tension. And then she goes to uh, Moscow and she, the whole Pussy Riot controversy, and she right. sticks her neck out for Pussy Riot, and the Russian government is not happy about that. So this film, Secret Project Revolution, is sort of a, uh, a way of her to um, come back at the public and say, hey, artistic freedom needs to be out right. there regardless of circumstance. Right. She uh, certainly has something to say and she's saying it, not afraid to say it. Not afraid to say it. Right. And, and the video, uh, like um, the, the film, actually has echoes of some Lady Gaga, a video work that Steve Klein has worked with her on. It's, right. it's sort of this. Well, we'll take a look online. Anthony, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Please be sure to join us again next week.